unfortunately, Fran Bereshoff, who takes care of the shopping needs, et cetera, for the hospitality center, cannot be here this morning. However, we are very fortunate to have her co-chair, Joan Schrammack, a young lady who makes life better for many people in many ways, here to tell us about the wonderful center that is a place for people to meet and share a slice of life, perhaps with a cookie or a cup of coffee or tea. Joan takes care of whatever is needed, checking to be sure that all of the people needed to serve refreshments, clean up, etc., are there. She can also be seen Wednesday mornings wearing the green jacket in front of the health center, helping people with whatever their needs might be there. She is also the secretary of the RV club. Although somewhat visually impaired, she crochets blankets for the VA, approximately 400 so far. No doubt I've missed at least a dozen or so other interesting facts. However, her unusual hats and big smile are certainly a big plus for the leisure world. Joan is here today to tell us about the Hospitality Center and answer any questions you might have. At this time, I present the one and only Joan Schrammack. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Schrammack. Did you want me to get on the mic? Or? Yes, if you'd like, or be in front of it. It's working. Good morning. Good morning. I could ask you if you're ready for coffee, but I see you already have it. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, our hospitality, and then if you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them. It was in June of 2000 that Fran Barisoff and Julie Holbrook organized the Hospitality Center, and it comes under the umbrella of the Golden Age Foundation. That's how the wonderful program became a reality. In the beginning, the average attendance was 25 to 30 per day, and we met right here in the lobby. We were given uh, a little special privilege because, as you know, in the lobbies, food and beverages are not uh, allowed to have, so we kind of were policemen. We kept them off the overstuffed furniture. Now they can do as they please. Now, since the opening of Clubhouse 6 and the more central location, we are growing each month. The month of September just passed. We served 3,326 guests, wow. an average of 151 per day. The new facility enables us to be open five days a week and all holidays, which is important. We have found that the holidays are lonely days for many residents, and this allows them to be with others for a cup of coffee and conversation at least. Through the generous donations to the Golden Age Foundation, we are able to provide coffee, tea, hot chocolate, and cookies including sugar-free cookies for the diabetic guests. One of our volunteers has a resource to Starbucks day-old pastries, and I need not tell you what a hit these are. I think even some of our diabetic restricted guests cheat a little bit. It's interesting to see the friendships that are formed. Even one or two romances have blossomed through hospitality, although we don't advertise this as one of our perks. <laughs> Fifty-six volunteers come regularly and some substitutes. They currently donate time to serve all the guests from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. each day. If you haven't already done so, please stop by and have a cup of coffee on us. And Fran is my co-chairman, and I'm sorry she's unable to be here today, but she does, as Ann said, I don't drive, and so she does all the shopping. The coffee and the cream and the condiments of that nature, we do order through the uh, Golden Rain Society, and they are delivered the cups and so forth. But she has to get the cookies, which can amount to a lot of cookies for that many people the napkins and those type of things. So we work as a team. I do the personnel and the people and she does the footwork. So we work good together. 
if any of you have anything to ask, I would be very happy to answer it to the best of my ability. It's a lovely place, and we wish more of you. I know, as Irv asked me this morning, uh, and it, there was a letter in the paper regarding opening another one on this end of town, but all the buses, every bus, and they even changed the route, so they all stop right in front of Clubhouse 6. And as you can see by the growth, it has not hindered people. There may be one or two that would like it here closer, but we are accessible to everybody, and we've picked up exercise people, ping pong people, golfers, swimmers. We've picked up quite a few in that way, and we haven't lost any that I can really tell. Yes, Anne. Do you think that the hours will be extended at any time? Not right at this time. If we do, it won't be any earlier. If down the line they will happen, it will possibly be extended an hour, but I don't foresee it right now. We could use a little more room, and Tom's going to chuckle when I say this because I bring it up at every Golden Age board meeting, but... I would like at least three more feet, Tom. Just three feet. <laughs> if they could move the table tennis over and allow us just a little more room for people that are in scooters and wheelchairs. But they get tired of me asking that. But that is my one plea. Other than that, we have currently eight large round tables with eight chairs around. We have a piano. And we have people that will come and play the piano. And we've even had singers occasionally will come and stand around. So that it, it's really an enjoyable place. So uh, There are uh, two of you who function, but you have this massive number of volunteers. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about how you get them and organize them? Or okay, I started out as a volunteer myself. Like I say, it was organized in June of 2000. I came on board in September of 2000. We try to have each day now between six and seven volunteers, and each day has a team leader. And you may go in, I go in every day to kind of check on them, and someone will say, how come today they won't do this or that? But they would yesterday, and I say each day works in, independently and Anne can attest to that she's one of my subs you may have one day where they will let you push the coffee cart down the middle and help serve and then another day they'd rather take the coffee pot so and we let them independently work because we want them to function as teams and they become very close they go out to dinner and the teams become extremely close and when someone is interested I give them an application I interview them and I tell them that they will be on a temporary basis until we don't very often have openings for full time. But I have a man working, not the same man, but every day we now have a man working, which is good too, because some men aren't there looking for a lady and they'd rather talk to a man. So it's, it's nice to have both sexes. Does anyone else have anything? If you want to, you can badger Tom to get me that three feet is all I ask. <laughs> Tom, will you get her the No, no, it's because there's nothing. We always take a table out in the state. <laughs> Our tables are mostly full. This, I will tell you, that's cute. On Friday, we have different days. We'll bring in different groups. Fridays, for some reason, the Dutch community of Leisure World finds that day is the day they want to meet. But... The Dutch women sit over here, and the Dutch men sit over here. I've never figured that one out, and I've teased them about it, but that's their way. Monday, we get the walking group. So every day, you'll get different. You get your old regulars, too, but they seem to be certain days that some come. So come see us. We have good coffee and cookies. <laughs> what day would be best if we get our extra three feet? No, she's wanted every day. But I want it every day. <laughs> we're going to have to get a table instead. That will solve the problem. I don't think so. <laughs> this is an ongoing joke at the board. But table tennis need their room, too. And they are, at first, uh, feelings weren't real gentle between us, I can say. But now they have really begun to enjoy us. And we're not chasing their ping pong balls because they have put up a skirt where the... <laughs> I don't, I'm not supposed to call it ping pong, but no. <laughs> but they bring us flowers. We have plants on the guest table, and uh, 
I say guests, where you come in and you're given a name tag. We don't put last names, just first names. And if you don't want one, we don't put one. It's just that simple, but it makes it nicer to communicate. But they bring, we have one of the little ladies in there that brings us a big tub of red licorice about once every week. So we get along, even without the three feet. I'll get along with them. Yes. Can you explain your, about your organization? The Golden Age Foundation? Well, about your organization at the... Um, Clubhouse 6. Hospitality? Yes. That's what I was just saying. We're open five days a week. I know, but we came in late. Okay. We're open five days a week from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We serve coffee, tea, cocoa, and cookies, and also Starbucks pastries, which go over <laughs> really big. Starbucks are very generous to give us, uh, and we have one lady, Lita Lewis, I don't know how many of you are familiar with her. She very generously picks them up and brings them. In fact, she called me last night. I go down on Sunday and take them out of the freezer so they'll be ready for today. And she called me and said, I just refilled the freezer and I have four more bags and there's no room, so I'll bring them to your house today when I get home. So there will be Starbucks and there are muffins and scones and bagels and any variety. You'd love, have you ever visited us? Oh, please come. And we also have nice tables outside. We're not encouraging it in this kind of condition, but we have nice five tables with umbrellas and chairs for outside uh, dining, I can say. But And they are used. A lot of times people want to, especially people that still have that bad habit, you know, of smoking. <laughs> they like to sit outside. They have to sit outside. <laughs> Do uh, contributions make an appreciable oh, yes. supplement to the uh, financing of your Yes, project? they do. And uh, we have found that our contributions have picked up down there. We don't solicit. We don't have a can out here asking for donations, but we, I have a nice little basket, and it has Golden Age Foundation envelopes in it. And I think it wouldn't be talking out of turn. Ta just at our last board meeting last meet week, one gentleman was sitting there having coffee, and he said he told uh, the treasurer of the Golden Age, he said, I didn't realize how nice it was, and he wrote out a check for $1,000. Wow. So it... And we were always right on it, hospitality, that we don't have a separate account. But we do like to get credit letting them know that people appreciate the hospitality. So whenever you donate money down there, we write hospitality on the envelope. And they're tax deductible, correct? Right. All your donations to Golden Age are tax deductible. Is that it? Well, I thank you all for inviting me. Now I better get down there and serve some coffee. I'll be hospitable. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I think Joan answered a lot of questions on people's minds. And it's hard to describe. That's why you have to go there and enjoy yes. it. Yes. Thank it's you. Very nice. Thank you thank for asking you. me. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming, Joan. Thank you. <laughs>